and this is Dr. Joe Connor in the Connor Bubble. And we have three special guests in the program today because the Connor Bubble is dedicated to bringing you innovative ideas and bringing you very uh, uh, insightful discussions on topics that are current. And today we're going to be talking about diversity and also dealing with diverse perspectives. Uh, one of the things we want you to understand is as an instructor myself, my job is to try to help my students become better leaders. And the Connor Bubble is one vehicle that I use to try to bring innovative ideas to not only my students, but to the general public as well. One of those things that you've heard me mention on a previous program is about this new ways to study, and they're going to be putting in a lot of money in that area. Uh, in fact, this week I'm going to a community uh, conference where they're getting uh, ideas from stakeholders on what should be in this research complex. And we're going to see uh, what can be done to make it more uh, diverse, if you will, to get a diverse perspective in, the, in that particular venue to give a chance for more people, not only in ethnicity and gender, but uh, also uh, uh, generational. And that's what brings us into the meeting today, because we're going to be talking about uh, those particular topics and with my guests. Uh, first, we want to introduce you to uh, a new guest in the Connor Bubble is Todd. He uh, uh, also Dennis <laughs> in the program as well. Yeah, so, yeah, so that was that was that was fun. Always love to meet hello Trojans. And then also uh, some regular guests on the Connor Bubble. We have Josh uh, Chiton, and then we also have Ramon. Ramon. Uh, Correct pronunciation of your last name? Uh, it's Barajas. S. Barajas. I <laughs> can't so get that butcher your last name. <laughs> so we're going to talk to them about what they're doing with young people in terms of what they're doing and their business with Student Direct. Okay, and there's so many diverse things that these entrepreneurs are doing. Uh, Josh and I are off camera was talking about how long we've known each other. Uh, we've uh, known each other at least about 10 years. And I've seen him grow as an entrepreneur and a, and, a, and a CEO of the many different diverse businesses that he and Ramon are involved in. So Josh, tell us uh, uh, what the foundation is up to. Well, uh, it's Halloween, so with our youth initiative, I think one of the companies we work with well, Boogazone, and uh, I'm very involved with that company. And what was the name of the company again? Boogazone. Boogazone. It's one of our most recent investments. Okay. And it's dance. Okay. And I could talk a lot about this company, but as far as the youth, we're doing this fundraiser uh, for the last few days, and okay. which has progressed from the first haunted house okay. years ago. And since it's our location, which is about 14,000 square feet, we could do it for multiple dates. And tomorrow, not tomorrow, but Friday, uh, it's about $20 to come and enjoy the maze, see the theatrics, and mm -hmm. have the whole haunted house. But at the same time, a show, a dance show, it's very creative, very well done, and then a, and an after party. So I think that when we first started, tickets were $4, and you know how much money we made mm -hmm. just for $4 tickets, like right. 13 grand in one night. And now we've scaled that to um, other schools, and, and now we're doing this at our own locations where we could do more impact, because yeah. I think you just can't give money to you. You have to kind of like create a system mm -hmm. where money can continue to grow and re be redistributed. So. Yeah, that's one of the things that, that, that I uh, appreciate about what you're doing, is that you are creating systems as an entrepreneur and, and business uh, person, you're creating systems and working with a lot of different schools. Approximately, how many schools are you, are you, are you guys working with now? <laughs> that list continues to grow, and I think what's more important than the schools we work with, I think, is what we're trying to do with other nations, other, other countries. Other nations? Correct. Or countries, okay. Just recently got a, a message from people from Burma. Okay. Students from Burma, and I, it amazed me because I've done so much in my own communities but yeah, I've done nothing for my own country. Okay. And they asked me one thing, which is, when will you return to Burma? Uh -huh. And they said my last name, and that was very sentimental because I'm thinking, wow, I abandoned my country and mm -hmm. haven't done anything for those students. And students in Burma is not the same as students in the U.S. And I think we've started to learn that when we expand our operations. Mm -hmm. And I, I am afraid. I, I really am afraid. But so more important than the numbers of schools we work with is when do we start making impact in other nations and mm -hmm. giving their students a reason to rise up and make change? Okay. Well, that's one of the titles that ties into diversity. Not only are we talking about diversity of young people in the schools here in the states, but now you're bringing in the big international component. And that's really getting to the, the, the diversity in a, in a really broad global sense. Ramon, what about the, the publications that student uh, uh, direct in terms of the, uh, uh, what's happening in the area? 
Well, as far as uh, student direct publications, it is a vital unit of the Student Direct Sherpa Foundation and everything it does. Uh -huh. So currently, it is working closely with the colleges and high schools to transform the way they distribute content mm -hmm. from more of a traditional uh, to a digital media aspect okay. and uh, take all of this information mm -hmm. and create this uh, like ecosystem, okay. you know, like a system where it could be distributed more efficiently um, and more interactively. Right. You know. And so, and so uh, in, in your role uh, as president of, of the Student Direct publication, your vision for the publication, is that also going to be uh, right now dealing with the states or are you uh, looking at the jumping in the global uh, aspects in, in the near future? Right now, uh, putting into perspective, everything is scalable. Okay. So we're trying to remain local for now. Okay. But uh, there is, uh, when the need ha happens, uh -huh. um, we will be, you know, uh, providing that need as okay. to direct okay. publications you know, as a vital unit of, of the foundation itself. So okay. we will be looking abroad. All right, that's good. Now, as a title that we're talking about, diversity and perspective, the perspective uh, things, let's just sort of back up a little bit. We hear a lot about critical thinking. I don't usually use that in, in, in my classes and stuff. I use critical perspective. The reason is the critical perspective takes into account the cultural aspects of the person we're communicating with. because. Uh, different cultures have different interpretations of different kinds of things. And so by understanding the cultural aspect will bring in diff diverse uh, interpretations. This is why I, I like to use the perspective in this title, because we diversity has some uh, very interesting uh, connotations, but we want to talk about diversity so we can see about the, the domestic side that you're talking about. We're talking about the international aspects you're talking about the different kind of uh, diversity of the medium that education undergoes. And then for Todd, in terms of your dental business and all the other ventures oh, that yeah. you are, are talking about as well. Absolutely. Now, since you've never met these gentlemen before, I want to get, because we were talking about perspectives in terms of how different in Berkeley and, and people in, in Southern California interact with each other. In, 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 uh, in Berkeley, how do, do the different student groups or, or, or different cultures interact? What is, what, what is your experience? You know, it, I, I think uh, the reason we ended up talking about this was because, um, you know, I, I noticed that my experience was very different mm -hmm. uh, being up north and then coming down uh, to Southern California. And um, I, I, I felt like there was a better integration up there. And I, I was one, trying to figure out why that might, might be. Uh -huh. and, um, you know, a couple things came to mind, and we, we discussed them. Uh, the first one is, you know, is of course transportation. I, we, when when people are on public transportation, they whether it's to go to work or to um, to school, uh, they interact with each other person to person. I think that that's something that's really important for a community because they come in contact with their community, mm -hmm. right? And no matter where they're coming from, they're on the same train, right? right? And so. Uh, in that regards, I, I, I think that the, you know, Los Angeles is, is finally starting to come into its own in terms of mass transit and the, the cocoon that everyone's got around them is starting to become less and less as people are taking public transportation mm -hmm. to the game and whatnot, right? right. And um, yeah, they're just getting used to being around people mm -hmm. who are um, maybe not from the same community. Okay. And I want to build on that in terms of diversity, in terms of the just the just the the transportation aspect. I know that you work with a lot of students and student organizations. In your experience, how are the students handling the 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 uh, the diversity between the groups? How do they? How is your experience in certain how the students communicating now? This different generation. Uh, how are they? Uh, communicating. What is the vehicle that brings students from diverse backgrounds together in your experience? Um, well, as the example is uh, CDRAG Publications. Okay. Um, like I said, working with different um, ethnicities, different uh -huh. communities, uh, different age groups within the community of mm -hmm. students itself. Um, it really brings together, uh, bringing stories, you mm -hmm. know, bringing um, awareness of uh, different causes right you know um, it builds 
that uh, new culture, right. you know, and uh, I think that's, you know, um, a uh, understanding mm -hmm. from uh, this perspective, you, you know, right. and because of social media, because of this new trend, uh, especially in the younger generation, this is something that we're starting to see. Yeah, one of the things that I was fascinated with over the years is that your uh, uh, digital resume, you were having the different resumes, people can put their resume and stuff together, and then the pictures and, and all the different stuff that you've had on uh, over the years. How, does, how is that uh, playing out in terms of now? Uh, uh, is that being expanded? Is, is it, uh, are young people taking it to another level in terms of the using, taking advantage of Student Direct uh, in terms of communicating and cutting across different kinds of uh, uh, age or, or gender or ethnic, eth uh, ethnic uh, backgrounds? Yeah, I think for me, we had to make an investment into Yale Inc. LA and really give up student publications for what can be, which is taking physical content, making it to digital media. Uh -huh. And because the social space online is amazing, but there's a disconnection. Okay. So we have to create a virtual and physical experience, which does take resources. It takes a community, it takes an organization, mm -hmm. and it takes constant effort. Right. So with the digital imprint of having a resume online through Yelling Inc., photos, videos, seeing it as it happens as they do their service projects or their ambitions, it has helped. So I think the key word is not communications, but because people can't communicate, it's more trust. Okay. How do we use communications to build trust? Okay. And I think there is trust within our communities as far as Young Inc. and Student Direct. Okay. And anything we're doing, even Boogie Zone, where if I wanted to live in someone's residence for a day or two, they know who I am and they've built that trust. Right. If I needed them to help me with X, Y, Z projects or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, there is that trust. So I think social media with the right culture and the right standards, there could be trust. And with trust, you could do, you could do anything. Mm -hmm. um, now build on that, that idea of standards and trust. I mean, because I think you're hitting on a, a very important communication issue. Like you're talking about uh, the, 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 the riding the trains, they see you over, t over time, they see you over and they see you on the redundancy. Uh, what about that tie-in and trust that, that you're talking about that someone will see you enough and, and your systems in place that they will be able allow you to come over and, and, and crash for a day or so. That to me is saying a lot about uh, of the communications possibilities between different groups and using social media and not just like a gossip platform but a really a genuine get to know your neighbor kind of kind of uh, effort is, is, is that uh, something that is intentional on your your, your, your your team's part yeah I think the way uh, the way we use social media is uh, you have a project you have a brand and you have your resume and I think with these physical events and experiences and with mm -hmm. these online meetings, trust is developed. And in some cases, you never met this person and they may make an introduction. Like I had a phone call yesterday, someone from Washington and I've never met this person, but they've seen my social media imprint and the very work organization that I'm a part of. And with that, there was trust and she introduced me to someone that's substantially wealthy and he was asking me for a half a million investment for an amazing app, uh, just amazing. And, and all the information she gave me and that was just on trust, mm -hmm. and I just thought that was interesting. Yeah. So the system is working for us, which is how do we leverage what we do in physicality and yet show on our social media, and how do we use our social media to expand our opportunities? Okay, all right. Um, since this is sort of new to you mm -hmm. in, in terms of this kind of thing, these, these young people are not your typical young people, and if you can imagine. They are serious entrepreneur and business people. Yeah. And, uh, and they work with hundreds and thousands of young people uh, in the Southern California area, and now even more internationally. And it's been doing so at least for 10 years, ever since I've known them. And, uh, and they put their money where their mouth is at. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I, I'm, I'm really proud of both of you in terms of that. And that's why I wanted to have the people hear this, this diverse conversation, because they need to see organically that there are people in this area wanting to make a difference and willing to put out the effort and, 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 and are successful. Trust is not an easy thing to, to build on. But to say what you just said about building trust in such a way and, and it's in your system to have the system in place so trust can be 
a, a established, verified, and, and, and checked to make sure that the, that the quality checks that, that, that is built into your system is, is quite impressive and young people can use that and then trust the integrity of what we're talking about. And it's important. Uh, uh, Ramon, it, as a publication person, uh, how is it that, that you see trust being built in the publication aspect of your, your aspect of what you do? What is, how, do you, how do you factor that in? Well, let's put it into perspective. Um, as a publication, it's um, the, the idea is to inform. Uh -huh. You know, the idea is to share. Right. You know, and uh, the purpose is to, let's say, inform about that trust. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like I said, it, it's all, all about building that culture. Right. So, working together um, as a close unit, it really brings that opportunity for trust. Okay. You know, because it allows, let's say, parents, uh, educators, mm -hmm. um, different you know people from the community you know it allows people to come together like we were stating before mm -hmm. now is there a size limit in terms of how many people can engage in with the publication you have have is there a a, uh, a bottleneck or or, or or restriction any you have any anything that say you, you can't handle more than X number of contributors or anything like that right now uh, everything, like I said, is uh, scalable, okay. and um, as far as limitations, there is no limitations. Okay. You know, it's all about reaching out to the students, you know, because that's really where our effort comes from, from our volunteers mm -hmm. uh, and their efforts. Okay. Uh, so the more volunteers that they are, you know, the more the capacity we're able to reach. Now you said, uh, how would they get in contact with you? Uh, well, right now we have a, a website. Okay. Uh, which is studentdirectpublications.info. Okay. Or a more direct way is uh, our email, which is publications at studentdirect.me. Okay, very good. Now, is the foundation, uh, would you prefer them to get in contact with the publication or the foundation directly? Well, if it's publications and publications. Okay. Uh, we've grown as an organization, so I think for me, I've taken a back seat. Okay. Where I'm no longer the CEO, I'm just the chairman okay. of the board, and we have multiple organizations within the student direct. And Right. Knowing that, but are we diversify? Where not only are we investing to philanthropies, but also into startups and you know just major groups. And uh, right. we've been very fortunate because some of these companies have been around longer than us, and uh -huh. we've been able to absorb their equity, right. re diversify their strategy, and and obviously not for the wrong reasons. I mean, I'm not someone that's motivated by greed. Okay. Everything I do is because I want to do more for philanthropy. Okay. Uh, but it does take discipline because. You know, there are students in other worlds where their education is not the same. Right. But the desire to lead, which mm -hmm. I think is lacking in the U.S. of A. Mm -hmm. I don't think our students... Wait, 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 back up again. Say it again more <laughs> clearly. Our so students are lacking in leadership. Okay. I feel that we have a strong curriculum that any nation will be envious of, but yet we have no leaders. Okay. And I say this very obnoxiously, but that's how I feel. And okay. When I see students in other nations who want to take a chance, right. and they have real problems where right. it's life or death, right. it amazes me, and I get so upset that I'm so focused on American politics, which deals with investments and philanthropies, and mm -hmm. dealing with petty, trivial issues, uh -huh. just to make some money. Right. And yet that money doesn't get circulated back to other nations. And at the same time, I think that I'll be criticized when I say these things, because we want to keep money in the US of A, but I am a humanitarian. Mm -hmm. I think the whole world is my platform. Right. So, which I want to talk more about as far as what I'm doing in the Senate. Okay. And my goals in education and innovation. So, okay. Uh, but maybe I went off topic, so sorry yeah. about that. No, no, no. <laughs> because I think what your passion is what I wanted the people to capture. The, the, your, your passion for helping. And you're, you're absolutely right about the leadership issue. In my classes, I tell my students the first day of class, my goal is not to, to make you marine biologist or general biologist. My goal is to make you a leader. And I, I agree 100% with you. I say it perfect. America's biggest problem is we're not training our students to become leaders. We're teaching them to be employees and not leaders. And so where we, not, we got to get, get our, our priorities straight, we need organizations like studentdirect.me to be able to help young people realize that they have to take the reins of, of control uh, when the boomers go out. 
You know, when, when the bus, when the bubble burst, that the young people have to step up. And we need organizations like you and people honestly telling young people to their faces that you are really not stepping up to the challenge that we need in the United States. And we need more and more young people to be able to do that. And I wanted to have you organically, naturally come out and say that because it was genuine. The concern that we have for America is our next generation and the generation after that. If we only let young people become consumers, get sucked into getting credit cards and, and all this kind of stuff and have all this student debt that young people averaging coming out of college with at least $24,000 worth of debt and then other students coming out with $200,000 in debt and loans out of medical school and stuff like that. That's crazy. But it all comes back to understanding that we need to help young people see that they have a role to play. They, they are capable of being leaders. And they want, I wanted to have you come and share that. And the thing about the dentistry, you stepped up, Todd. What's impressed me is that in 2008, your family's business needed help. You were from Berkeley, going to school and coming out, and then you saw a need, and you went and, and, and took the leadership reins to take care of that. And this is what this, the audience, I want you to understand. The whole program today is to show you three young men who stepped up with diverse perspectives, but the core that runs through them is they wanted to take the leadership role to make a difference in their culture and their family to make the community better. And we challenge each one of you to do the same in your own community. And you got people who are around like studentdirect.me and the, their foundation and other places that want to help you. But they can't help you if you don't want to get off your assets to go out and get the help that, you, that is necessary for the nation. And this program is designed to encourage you. It can be done. People will want to build your trust. Systems are in place. And then we heard from our, our guests sharing some of their thoughts and stuff. So what I'd like to do in the last uh, few minutes is so give each one of you Start with you, Todd, is our newest one. We got maybe about uh, a minute or so. Sure. Tell us um, your, 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 your encouragement for the, for the audience. Yeah, you know, I, I think that one of the most important things, and we've talked about a lot of you know, technology and whatnot, but I, I think that one of the most important things is, is outreach. Okay. You know, and I, it's, it's important for people to get into the community, educate people about what it is uh, that they're doing, and um, uh, help integrate these okay. ideas. Okay, very good. All right, Ramon, what about you? Um, I definitely agree with you. Uh, it is all about integration and uh, definitely finding the way to, you know, put these pieces together, okay. you know, and uh, all that innovation.